Hey everyone, welcome to our symposium, Future Philology. Um, I, I want, to, uh, before we start, I just want to uh, give you some background of myself and this symposium. I, I am from uh, China, as you can see. Oh, by the way, my name is, is Zhang Zhan, but my name is tricky even for Chinese people. So I go by ZZ, so everybody calls me ZZ. But I, I'm wondering if I'm too old now to be called ZZ. So I'm thinking of thinking about it. Anyway, for now, ZZ is fine. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm trained as a philologist of ancient Iranian languages at Harvard. Uh, before that, I, I had a master's degree in Sanskrit in Beijing. So I came to the US uh, wanting to do philology, like serious philology, and, it, and I did. I worked on a bunch of Hotanese texts for my dissertation. And during the course, I realized philology is not a discipline at all anymore, at, at least in, in modern academia. And uh, it's, you, you don't really find a department of philology in at least American universities. So it became a kind of foundation that uh, left out in the, in, in, in the system. Um, there are not many places where I can probably say I'm a philologist uh, without being seen as a dinosaur of some sort. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking about this for a long time. While working on my Kodanese texts, I became familiar with um, several databases of images, basically the International Dunhuang Project, uh, the Truth and Fortune project uh, from where I can just get the images of the manuscripts that I want to use uh, very conveniently. Uh, but in the course, I also became aware of several better databases of our neighboring languages in the Tarim Basin, namely the Gantari project and the Tokarian ones, which made me very jealous. So why don't we have such databases in Hotanese? So that, that just uh, came to me and I wanted to do this. And then I went to uh, New York. I saw the Institute for the Study of Ancient History. And I met a bunch of people there who also does uh, digital humanity. And I wanted to put together a, a small workshop on databases there, but it didn't materialize. But that's the start of this whole thing. Um, in 2018 in Beijing, we had a small workshop after the big Beijing forum in, uh, where I introduced some discoveries of um, Hotanese studies and also expressed my uh, jealousy to my colleagues who have their own databases. Uh, I envisioned that I someday I can have my own Hotanese.org, which is live now, which is, um, but it's very limit, uh, preliminary. I can give you a peek. Yeah, this is our Kodanese uh, database, but there's only dictionary. I'm working to, to make this work better uh, to include texts and other things. But uh, I'm offered the job at Oxford in 2020 last year, uh, which our program Invisible East aimed to create a database of texts and documents from the Islamic East. So that's, that, that's something that I have always been wanting to do. And uh, the, the first thing came, that came to my mind about the conference is to, is to revive this uh, digital humanity uh, database conference, so, uh, which I call Future Philology. There used to be a, a big conference or a book also called Future Philology in the 80s, developed by, I think, uh, by the univers uh, Columbia University. But their future 30 years ago is already different from what we are facing now. I think we are now in a digital uh, era um, of uh, all kinds of IT and internet uh, techniques. These techniques these techniques should enable us to do things that are uh, unfeasible, uh, even unthinkable before. So that's why I convened this uh, symposium and uh, uh, I convened scholars working on various databases from the ancient world. 
Uh, basically, we, we face the same problem, um, but we just uh, work on different time and, and uh, time period and locations. I think this will be a good opportunity to, uh, for us to, to learn from each other, to share our expertise, experiences, and frustrations. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that, that that's that's for it. that's for me. Thank you so much, Zizi, for for this welcome. And I too want to welcome everyone very warmly to to this virtual conference. And it's wonderful that we already have eighty people uh, participating at this point. Um, so very welcome to to our speakers, to our chairs, and to the wider audience. Um, so Zizi has pulled together this incredible program um, and it's really his passion for the subject that, that um, made it all happen. There were many other people who've also been helping with this and I'd like to thank them. Servan Wenzel, our administrator, Steve Mather for all the web stuff he's done, and the entire Invisible East team of postdocs who've pulled together the Oriental Institute and colleagues in IT and admin who've also made all this happen. Um, so today and tomorrow um, from 2 p.m. our time, always until about 7 p.m. our UK time, we'll be hearing um, about from and about 15 different digital corpuses and databases, database projects focused on late antique and medieval documents in non-European languages. And I think this should give us pause um, for thought. Um, there have been other digital humanities types of conferences, um, but mostly really from the European uh, languages, language world. Um, I'm not aware of anything as big as this uh, that really covers the several dozen languages that we're covering over these next two half days. So it's really, really exciting to, to be able to be part of this and to listen to you. Um, the, the expertise, um, niche as it is, um, is developing and digital corpuses um, as powerful tools for research are becoming bigger, but they're also becoming smarter. Um, so we'll be considering over the course of these two half days, we'll be considering the full cycle of data collection and interpretation, computational searchability, um, uh, on the back end, and then we'll move towards the front end, the visualization and public access democratization of this sort of data through reciprocal processes between academic and non-academic audiences, project and outside project uh, colleagues and audiences. So again, we have speakers from all over the world here today, um, across the globe, in Europe, in the US, in Asia, uh, and this is this is really a testament, I think, to how um, how it's really necessary for us to talk to each other. Um, so for today, I won't I won't take up much more of your time. We will begin uh, with the back end, and our first uh, chair of of our first session is Father Columbus Stewart. I'm I'm extremely pleased that he has agreed to take on this role to kick us off, uh, and um, he's probably known to most of you as the executive director of the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library in Minnesota, which has been doing a fantastic job at digitizing manuscripts, um, especially from dangerous and remote places. Um, Father Stewart has uh, an academic background in history and religious studies from Harvard and Yale, and he also earned his DPhil from Oxford. So without further ado, and we're actually a little bit ahead of schedule, I'm very, very pleased to hand over now to the chair of our first session, Father Columbus Stewart in Minnesota. 